Welcome to a video that will hopefully detail some of the ways that you can mine in the Star Citizen 3.7 patch. I've been having a look around to try and gather information myself when I was doing this, um, and I couldn't really find any in-depth videos that explains exactly how to do um, mining in this new patch. And it's quite interesting, so I'll show you exactly how I personally do it, and then hopefully you can you can have some fun with this mechanic yourself. So over here you can see that I'm on Lawville, um, probably my favourite planet in the game, just came off this tube station, and over here we can see the map, the map of the rail network uh, that we'll be needing to navigate. So we're currently in the top left hand corner, just got off the central line, this is where you want to go. If you're coming from the spaceport, you're going to want to take the commerce line, the green one. Um, but if you're coming from the spawn, you're going to be on the, uh, the metro station, so you want to take the spaceport line first and then come to the commerce line, then the central line, you'll be here. Um, so what you want to do is you'll want to follow the direction I'm now heading in this game, which will take us up out of this um, this metro station. Uh, we'll come along here towards the workers district. Now, this is where we want to pick up our mining tool and backpack. And these are both very important for what we're going to be doing today. Um, that's located just down this way, uh, once we come into the main plaza area, it's just uh, opposite this neon sign here, just have a pan around so you know roughly where I am by the landmarks. Uh, we'll want to go down this staircase and towards this little store here. Pop this door open, come forward. On the left here, there'll be a desk, and lo and behold, the grey cat mining tool is right here. You want to purchase that along with the mod in the bottom right hand corner of that. Um, these, yeah, it's really good. I'm, I'm enjoying the mining with these two tools. Um, you want to go into your inventory once you've purchased these. I didn't purchase them myself because I already own them. Uh, you want to go into the utilities, equip that there, and then go to the attachment, equip that there. Don't forget to apply that in the bottom right. Otherwise, um, all that effort you just put in. You'll have to do it again. Um, and then you're also going to want this backpack. I'll show you that real quick. It's in the armor tab, and it's just down here. And it's this one right here. So it's called the Rucksack Core. So I'm going to show you exactly where to get that to if we come out of this menu. That's just across the hallway in this little armor stand area. There it is on the back of this guy here. You want to orientate yourself until it comes up on the left hand side, but that is what you're actually looking at right there and once you purchase both of those it's about 4,000 credits total for both of them um, and once you've done that you can start your mining expedition so now we have both of the things that are required to do mining uh, so you're probably thinking where do I go to actually mine exactly and now there's, there's two possibilities this I'm going to show you the first one it's going to be in your contract manager under investigations, you're going to be looking for missing people quests. Here's one now. Uh, it takes you to a cave on Hurston. A cave, that's exactly what we're looking for. So we're going to take this offer. Very good for us. Um, now, you're probably thinking, why would I go and do this? Um, and the, the point of this is really, it's quite hard to find a cave otherwise. You could always go to the asteroid belt, though, as an alternative. But that's usually a lot more heavily populated by other people doing the same thing as you. This way it kind of guarantees that you're going to be in a cave, usually by yourself, maybe... It, occasionally there's other people there, it's not too common that you find them when you go to these places. So let's take a look at the map real quick. Now, here's Hurston. In case you're brand new to this game and you have no idea what any of the locations I've been talking about so far, it's located right here, the closest planet to the star in this universe. Uh, this green diamond at the lower portion of this planet. That is my quest location. This will probably differ for you, because um, they can honestly appear anywhere and it could be any cave. And uh, Lawville was that white blip on the planet. Now, I'm going to quickly show you where you can sell this stuff so you can actually make a profit. That'll be here on the moon Aberdeen on this location, Norgard. It's on the north portion of the planet. Um, this is where we're going to make most of our mo money because you can sell all your materials here. We're going to go here right now so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. 
So once you've touched down on Aberdeen's surface, you'll see something like this. A um, bunch of boxes, a few landing pads, and a few buildings like these here. So there's one here in front of me, and one on the right hand side from me. Um, there's a few more dotted about this complex, but the one you'll want is this one that's right in front of me here. Um, we're just going to pop inside here, so if we just open this door real quick, and then go through the airlock. This takes a couple seconds. Right in front of us, there will be a trading terminal. This is where all the money is made. Um, currently my backpack will be empty, so we won't be able to sell anything right now. Um, but we'll go into the sell tab here, and everything should appear just like that. You can sell from the ship or the backpack, both. Personal storage is what we're going to be focusing on because that is the easiest way that I've found of making money. Now in this small portion of the video here, I did actually encounter a bug on my way to the cave in the mission. Um, if you're not interested in the bugs and you just want to focus on the mining, there is a timestamp in the bottom left hand corner of the video. But this is more of a PSA to new players that bugs like this can occur from time to time, and uh, it's, while it's slightly annoying, it's to be expected as the game is very early alpha at the moment. Um, so in this portion of the video here, I did have my canopy door opening and closing itself randomly on its own, not exactly sure why, but eventually it did kick me out when I, when I quantum traveled to this location quite close to the cave I was going to, which slowed me down a little bit. I had to go back to Lawville, back to the spaceport, get a different ship, and then come all the way back here, but again, it's a little bit of a PSA to new players that bugs like this can occur. Slightly annoying, I know, but it's to be expected with an alpha build. So, here I am pulling up to one of these caves now. It looks something like this on screen here. Now they usually stretch about 200 to 300 meters underground, so you want to land as close as you can to one of these. There's no specific landing restrictions on the surface here, so you can land honestly wherever you want. But as close as possible to the cave as you can is best, because traveling to it is a bit of a stretch. Of, say, for example, you land about a kilometer out, you're not going to want to run all that way. And as there's no restrictions on the landing here, you might as well land as close as you possibly can. Because uh, subsequently, when you come back out of the cave, you're going to want to leave as quick as you can. Um, if you see any other ships parked outside one of these caves, that also tells you that there may be another player in there. And as there are weapons in this game, guns, etc., you want to be fully armed uh, in case you run into a player, because they could also land after you get there. So just be careful. Now, as you pull up to one of these caves, you're going to want to press 4 on your keyboard, that will bring out your mining tool, and if you press T, that will activate your flashlight. Now, as you stretch deeper and deeper, you'll hopefully come across some materials. It's a bit hard to see underground, because the flashlight isn't incredible, but this game does focus on realism, so it's quite realistic to assume that a flashlight, if you went in this cave personally, wouldn't be that good. So skipping forward a little bit, we see I found my first mining deposit here. Now this is one of the green looking ones. We want to avoid these as much as possible, so I took a quick glance at it and moved on. They're not worth mining, they're a bit hard to mine compared to the other ones, and they're not as profitable, so you, it's honestly not worth your time to dig these up, so avoid them where possible. Skipping forward again, I come across my next mining deposit. This is the purpley colored one. There's two different kinds of these. Both of them are profitable, you want to mine up both of them. Now as you saw when I right clicked onto the rock, it started scanning it, and that therefore brought up the little mini game on the left hand side of the tool. Now, when you left click it starts mining, and then you'll need to use your scroll wheel to control the power shown on the right hand side of the interface on the tool. Now you want to keep this power within the little green region on the mini game. If you go a Below that, it won't mine the rock at all. If you go above that, you risk the rock exploding in your face and potentially killing you, which is definitely avoidable. Um, but if, if you keep your scroll wheel going up and down, keeping the power sustained in a way that it keeps the little arrow inside that green region, the rock will break properly as shown here. 
Now, once that's done, you can then pick up all these little rocks using F. If you just press F on all of those, you'll go into this little animation to pick up all of those rocks, put them in your backpack that you bought earlier. Now, some of these rocks do get stuck inside of the wall. That's perfectly normal again. You don't really want to worry about them too much because it's not really worth extra effort of trying to get them. This one here right in front of me, as you can see, is stuck inside of the wall. This usually happens a couple times. Sometimes when you bend down, the animation does put your head through the wall. And you can see additional rocks that have gone inside the wall. That's normal. Just leave those. And here in my inventory, you can see that's there. Now, you want to keep mining ideally until you hit 100% capacity so that you get the full amount when you sell. Now, in these caves, there's nothing else that will really kill you, no enemies. You just have to really worry about fall damage, so take your time, navigate carefully, there's no real rush, nothing in these caves will kill you besides falling off things. And that just about does it for the basic mining guide. Uh, once you've got all your materials, return to space, quantum jump back to Aberdeen if you're not there already, go to Norgard, go to the little trading uh, location that I showed you before and sell all your materials. You probably make about 20 to 30,000 credits per sale. Um, so it's decent money, like you could probably afford to rent some good ships for a little while if, if you keep doing this enough. Um, but if you really wanted to make some better money, I guess you could go into trading. There's a few more guides online about that, so I didn't see the need to make one of those as of yet. Um, so if you wanted to make some real money, go into that. But this is a fun little activity you can bring your friends to do as well, and it's just generally great fun. Um, but as you can see, this is the route you want to take. If you were already on um, Hurston in one of the caves there like I was, this is the route you'll want to take to come back. You can quantum jump to um, Aberdeen and then you can quantum jump to this little location here. So it's really easy to reach these, not too much effort involved. Um, you don't really have to request access to land here either because you can just land on the rocks near to Norgard like I do every time I arrive. Um, but it is definitely easier to bring a ship that doesn't have a green UI. Uh, because you can't actually see where you're going at all if you do that. Uh, and that just about does it for the video. I'll probably put a little bonus clip at the end of this video. Um, if you want to stick around and watch that, it's quite entertaining. It's one of the bugs I encountered, ad additional bugs to the one I already showed you earlier. Um, just to give you another glimpse of what you could potentially encounter, depending on your, uh, your game installation, I would recommend putting this on an SSD if you haven't done already, because it seems hard drives do cause most of the problems. Anyway, that does it for me today, and I will see you guys next time. Peace out. Bye. I think you buy the I've got the minute if you start now. Oh, dear God. My mate fucking mad. My character's having an epileptic fit. Send help. Oh, you're sitting on my for me. Yeah, that's because I'm, I'm fucking having epilepsy right now. Wait, what? Um. <laughs> Fucking hell, dude. What the, what the shit is going on? Hang on. What the fuck is actually going on? Oh yeah, my I'm... fucking god. <laughs> Hang on. Give me a second. <laughs> Yeah, I was surprised when my PC was able to run an ultra. As soon as I got out, I was like, is this gonna be able to run it? Got it straight when I was like, decent. Fuck me, how do I. How... Stop, please, game. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, I, okay, my character. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs>